Oh, it's so good to have you here. It's good to connect again. Thank you for joining us. Pleasure. Now, speaking of learning, what I didn't share just now, and it is in your LinkedIn profile, but I saved it, is a curious fact about your own education, which I didn't know about, that despite failing set school exams, failing set school exams, I feel like I should be emphasizing this particular point in our time, and dropping out of university, you've been awarded honorary doctorates from the University of Sydney and Murdoch University in Perth. <sighs> Given... We have a whole generation of young people right now looking to sit exams, having exams disrupted, having education in its formal capacity disrupted. I can't wait to hear your pearls of wisdom through your experience. Well, um, I think that we, we are in a very interesting time and it's obviously extremely stressful for lots of students. Mm. But I also don't want us to paint a picture that... Um, this kind of one size fits all. And I think that's my big message about education and learning that we created, um, and rightly so, when you want to lift an entire population, like in a period post-war or kind of new eras, you try to create a system that you can get as many people into as possible yeah. so that you lift, you lift performance. And of course, that's what happened to education you know, probably after the Second World War and then again kind of in the 60s and 70s after there were so many movements, women's movement, civil rights movements and many more people coming into education and learning. Um, and that's great and it all served its purpose then and there. But what we don't, what we then have discovered, you know, decades on is that education needs to be very differentiated. People mm. learn very, very different ways. People are not one homogenous person. We are many kinds of people with many kinds of learning styles, many kinds of backgrounds that impact and influence those learning styles. And also we are many people like, for instance, First Nations people who bring 60,000 years of learning and lifelong mm. learning and learning from land and country and people and culture. Um, so we now know that learning is completely different probably to what we created and what was um, established in the in the 1900s, 18 and 1900s. So I think that I, you know, was very much, <laughs> Marianne, one of those people that was in a system that kind of was still very homogenised about the mm. way you learned, where you learned, how you learned and what you learned. And I... Like many people, I think I was just a bit more vocal about it. Um, I just fell out of that system and I objected to it. And I objected to it by basically either not showing up or by not doing any work at all. Or thirdly, in my more creative moments, by doing interesting things at school, by using the school environment because I had to be there just to do other things. And um, after I went through three or four schools, I finally got to the last school and they were pretty cool. This was, um, and un unusually so, because my last stop was a girls Catholic school, which my parents said, when it all goes to hell and when no other school will take you, you are going to end up at a girls Catholic school. <laughs> oh my goodness. And that's why I ended up at a girls Catholic school with a very high fence. But it turns out that girls Catholic school, which, happen to be the Bridgetine nuns who are the uh, very um, academic nuns. Mm -hmm. They were all getting PhDs. They were all very interested in the world. They were very interested in the future of learning. And they ended up amazingly in an unlikely place of saying, we know that you're not into this kind of formal system. So at least come and do some of the things that you want to do. So at that school, wow. in a very short period of time, I got to do things like um, get into the debating team and the debating team got into the state finals and I got to set up the first girls motor mechanics course for girls at a girls school in Australia and I got to run a massive newsletter that ran for hundreds of pages I don't know how that we produced every couple of weeks and I got to do a whole bunch of outreach stuff into the community none of it which is the whole purpose of Learning Creates Australia by the way none of that was taken into account in any way, shape or form in formal mm. academic terms. None of it. None of it mattered. The fact that I spent 
40 hours a week doing outreach yeah. in the community, coming up with new ideas, being an entrepreneur. There was no way that that system could recognize me and all those things that I knew and could do, which mm -hmm. were multiple by the time I left school. Um, there was no way that they could do that. And so one of our purposes about Learning Creates Australia is how might we broaden the formal recognition system so that young people can bring what they know and can do in and beyond school to be recognized and how could how could we do that in a way that had utility and trust not just a badge that says here's a badge you're a great girl boy scout whatever but actually we've assessed it we've measured those things that you're doing and we can give them a context and we can give them an assessment and recognition within the broader within the broader system and if i had been able to do that i would have been a great ace student <laughs> You would have been more than a grade A student. I think you probably would have set the tone for exemplaries. <laughs> well, I don't know, but I definitely wow. would have got a different score at the end of the game and I would have had a different trajectory, to be honest. And it, but it, but yeah. it, also I would have left school with a different sense of confidence yeah. and a different set, a different mindset going into the world rather than a student and I left school obviously with huge relief but also with a massive sense of failure so imagine mm -hmm. starting your life out in the world at 17 with mm -hmm. a massive sense of failure because mm -hmm. you over and over again failed the school system I just I just I would not wish that on any student or young person because I spent the next you know 20 30 years working through all that Mm, and get mm. over imposter syndrome and you know all those things that we talk about particularly as leaders is actually those things that lots of them were laid down in those first seven 16 17 years of our life yeah i can only imagine that the that the adults in your life or the teachers in your life who did shine a light on your strengths and welcome those opportunities for you to be able to practice them even though there wasn't that formalized acknowledgement um, or like you said recording which I know you're working so hard to to establish now with learning creates what difference did those people make for you well there's there's you know it's interesting isn't it because we've always said this and I've really discovered this in my work with young people because obviously very not long after I left school I kind of went on to entrepreneurial things and worked with young people that were all at the margins so they were either young Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander young people who are living in the inner city um, and in kind of a lot of different complex contexts or you know I then went on to work with young people in foster care and state care which is a sort of a background that I'd come from as well. So I kind of learnt very quickly after I left school that it's, you know, and the research is in, it's quite, kind of like one person can make a massive difference in a young person. It doesn't even have to be everyone. It doesn't yeah. have to be the hundred teachers in the school. It can be just, just one. one. And at my school, the last school I was at, it was absolutely just one who basically mm. said, I see you. I see all this struggle and what's going on and, you know, I'm just going to back you and just get behind you and kind of give you cover as well mm -hmm. from all the other teachers who are like, what is she doing and how is she getting uh. away with it? So somebody who sees you can give you cover and the space to kind of at least have a tiny bit of self-expression I think is really important. Absolutely. But equally, my teacher in year eight who took my parents aside and said, listen, uh, Jan's not going to go anywhere in education uh, and wow. she, should drop out, she should drop out now at 13 and just honestly just go to Coles and kind of get into the check checkout chick thing. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, by the way, if that's what you want to do and if that's where you are. But my parents went ballistic. My parents were academics and they just looked at this teacher and said, there's no way that our child's dropping out at 13 because yeah. you've decided she has no, she's not going to go anywhere. So that teacher also had a massive impact on my life because that wow. teacher at 13 said, you are going to fail in this system. In your first year of high school, they said you're going to fail in this system and you shouldn't even be here. So I had these bookends, which had a massive impact on me. Um, I was just lucky that I had a ridiculously optimistic um, 
kind of resilient spirit and mindset and I was a very free spirit so I kind of did whatever I wanted to do despite what people would say Um, (laughs) I I honestly know not every young person's like that right lots of young people would be extremely damaged by Mm. that kind of input those kind of inputs so Mm. I think we have to be very 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 careful about knowing who it is that we're working with that we are not in a homogenized world and neither should education learning be a homogenized system that we Mm. are now in a very customized personalized world in every part of our life we can customize what we buy what we experience how we experience it where we experience it what we experience and education learning is absolutely going in that direction and that is a good thing for students and it's not that we shouldn't learn basics and I am never going to walk away from the fundamentals obviously you need to be able to read and write and add up but after that Mm. after the foundational pieces we should be creating many 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 pathways for students to learn to show up to engage um, knowing that that sets the antecedents for everything that happens to them in the way that they approach the world. (laughs) Jan Owen, thank you so much for joining us today. You've been so generous with your time. Before we let you go, where's the best place for people to connect with you, to learn about Learning Creates, to contribute to the work you're doing and to follow up on your journey? So learningcreates.org.au is a great place to just go and hang out and see all the work that's been done over two years in labs across the country, led by young people, with educators, with industry, with First Nations peoples, with policy makers, with researchers. It's all there. Amazing, amazing story about what we've done so far. We've got a long way to go. Um, I hang out on LinkedIn quite a lot um, and on Twitter. Um, I basically try to stay away from everything else because I've got, you know, attention deficit disorder. So I would just spend all my time on social media all day if I had it on <laughs> in front of me. So I'm very, I'm very disciplined um, with where I spend my time um, to hang out with people. Yeah. So and in the real world, wow! I hope to see everyone again soon. We've had so many incredible um, things that have been cancelled conferences and I had so much stuff that I was going to be doing in schools this year Mm. and it's all been canned. So I hope that we're all going to get back out and get together and start working and learning together again. I just, I can't wait to be back in, um, yeah, back in the world with the innovators and the dreamers and the doers um, in education learning. Very, very excited. Back IRL. Yes, we will see you there. Oh, thank you, Jan. And thank you to all our listeners as well for joining. Of course, you can get your fun sheet, that what if activity, by joining us in our show notes and all the links to the resources that we've spoken about, including the beautiful work both by FYA and Learning Creates over on our episode page. You've been listening to Classroom 5.0 with your host, Marianne Power, and our guest today, Jan Owen. We'll see you later, alligators. (laughs) 